you you kind of mentioned a, a different maybe radical computational medium like biological and there's other ideas so th there's a lot of spaces in asic so it's domain specific mm -hmm. and then there could be quantum computers and would, so we can think of all of those different mediums and types of computation what's the connection between swapping out different hardware systems in the instruction set do you see those as disjoint or are they fundamentally coupled yeah so what's so kind of if we go back to the history um uh you know, when Moore's law is in full effect and you're getting twice as many transistors every couple of years, you know, kind of the challenge for computer designers is how can we take advantage of that? How can we turn those transistors into better computers, uh, faster typically? And so there was an era, I guess in the 80s and 90s where computers were doubling performance every 18 months. And if you weren't around then, what would happen is uh, you had your computer um, and your friend's computer, which was like a year, or year and a half newer, and it was much faster than your computer. And you, he, he or she could get their work done much faster than your computer because you were. So people took their computers, perfectly good computers, and threw them away to buy a newer computer because the computer one or two years later was so much faster. So that's what the world was like in the 80s and 90s. Well. With the slowing down of Moore's law, that's no longer true, right? You, not, now with, you know, not, with not desk side computers, but the laptops, I only get a new desk a laptop when it breaks, right? When, oh, damn, the disc broke or the display broke, I gotta buy a new computer. But before you would throw them away because it just they were just so sluggish compared to the latest computers. So that's, you know, uh, that's a, a huge uh, change of, of what's g gone on. So, but since this lasted for decades, kind of programmers and maybe all of society is used to computers getting faster regularly. It, we now, now believe those of us who are in computer design, it's called computer architecture, that the, the path forward is instead is to add accelerators that only work well for certain applications. Um, so since Moore's law is slowing down, we don't think general purpose computers are gonna get a lot faster. So the Intel processors of the world are not gonna, haven't been getting a lot faster. They've been um, barely improving, like a few percent a year. It used to be doubling every 18 months and now it's doubling every 20 years. So it's, it was just shocking. So to be able to deliver on what Morse Law used to do, we think what's gonna happen, what is happening right now is people adding accelerators to their microprocessors that only work well for some domains. And by sheer coincidence, at the same time that this is happening has been this revolution in artificial intelligence called machine learning. So um, with, as I'm sure your other uh, guests have said, you know, AI had these two competing schools of thought is that we could figure out artificial intelligence by just writing the rules top down, or that was wrong. You had to look at data and infer what the rules are, the machine learning, and what's happened in the last decade or eight years is machine learning has won. And it turns out that machine learning, the hardware you build for machine learning is pretty much multiply. The matrix multiply is a key feature for the way people, machine learning is done. So, uh, that's a godsend for computer designers. We know how to make matrix multiply run really fast. So general purpose microprocessors are slowing down. We're adding accelerators for machine learning that fundamentally are doing matrix multiplies much more efficiently than general purpose computers have done. So we have to come up with a new way to accelerate things. The danger of only accelerating one application is how important is that application. Turns, it turns out machine learning gets used for all kinds of things. So serendipitously, uh, we found something to accelerate that's widely applicable. Uh, and we don't even, we're in the middle of this revolution of machine learning. We're not sure what the limits of machine learning are. So this has been a kind of a godsend. If you're gonna be able to excel, deliver on improved performance, as long as people are moving their programs to be embracing more machine learning, we know how to give them more performance even as Moore's law is slowing down. And counterintuitively, the machine learning mechanism 
you can say is domain specific, but because it's leveraging data, it's actually could be very broad in terms of in terms of the domains it could be applied in. Yeah, that's exactly right. So sort of, it's almost sort of, uh, people sometimes talk about the idea of software 2.0. We're almost taking another step up in the abstraction layer in designing machine learning systems, because now you're programming in the space of data, in the space of hyperparameters. It's changing fundamentally the nature of programming. And so the specialized devices that uh, that accelerate the performance, especially neural network-based machine learning systems, might become the new general. Yeah. Uh, so the this the thing that's interesting to point out these are not coral. These are not tied together. The enthusiasm about machine learning, about creating programs driven from data, that we should figure out the answers from data rather than kind of top down, which is classically the way most programming is done in the way artificial intelligence used to be done. That's a movement that's going on at the same time. Coincidentally, and, and, the, and the first word in machine learning is machines, right? So that's going to increase the demand for computing because instead of programmers being smart writing those, those things down, we're gonna instead use computers to examine a lot of data to kind of create the programs. That's the idea. And Remarkably, this gets used for all kinds of things very successfully. The image recognition, the language translation, the game playing, and you know, it gets into uh, pieces of the software stack like databases and stuff like that. We're not quite sure how general purpose it is, but that's going on independent of this hardware stuff. What's happening on the hardware side is Moore's law is slowing down right when we need a lot more cycles. Right. It's failing us it's failing us right when we need it because there's going to be a greater increase, uh, a greater increase in computing, and then this idea that we're going to do so-called domain-specific. Here's a domain that the, your greatest fear is you'll make this one thing work, and that'll help you know five percent of the people in the world. Well, this this looks like it's a very general-purpose thing. So the timing is fortuitous that if we can perhaps if we can keep building hardware that will accelerate machine learning, the, the neural networks, that'll be, the timing will be right, that that neural network revolution will transform you know, software, the so-called software 2.0, and the software of the future will be very different from the software of the past, and just as our microprocessors, even though we're still gonna have that same basic risk instructions to run a big pieces of the software stack, like user interfaces and stuff like that, we can accelerate the, the kind of the small piece that's computationally intensive. It's not lots of lines of code, but there, it takes a lot of cycles to run that code, that that's gonna be the accelerator piece. And so this that's what makes this, from a computer designer's perspective, a really interesting decade. Uh, what Hennessy and I talked about in our, the title of our Turing Warrant speech is a new golden age. We, we see this as a very exciting decade, uh, much like when we were assistant professors and the risk stuff was going on, that was a very exciting time. It was where we were changing what was going on. We see this happening again. Tremendous opportunities of people because we're fundamentally changing how software is built and how we're running it. So uh, which layer of the abstraction do you think most of the uh, acceleration might be happening? The, if you look in the next 10 years, sort of Google is working on a lot of exciting stuff with the TPU, sort of there's a closer to the hardware, there could be optimizations around the, uh, around, closer to the instruction set, there could be optimization at the compiler level, it could be even at the higher level software stack. Yeah, it's gonna be, I mean, if you think about the the old risk sys debate, it was both, a comp it was software hardware, it was the compilers improving as well as the architecture improving, and that that's, likely to be the way things are now. With machine learning, they, they're they using uh, domain-specific languages. The languages like uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch are very popular with the machine learning people. That Those are the raising the level of abstraction. It's easier for people to write machine learning in these uh, domain-specific languages like, like uh, PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow. So where the most of the optimization might yeah, be happening. Yeah, and so, the, and so there'll be both the compiler piece and the hardware piece underneath it. So as you kind of, the fatal flaw for hardware people is to create really great hardware, but not have brought along the compilers. And what we're seeing right now in the marketplace because of this 
enthusiasm around hardware for machine learning is getting, you know, probably a billions of dollars invested in startup companies. We're seeing startup companies go belly up because they focused on the hardware, but didn't bring the software stack along. 